Hello, today we're going to have an introduction to designing optimization models with Excel Solver. And this skill is extremely important for all business people because businesses operate under constraints, limitations, or restrictions. Uh, we only have so much production time, we only have so many people, we only have so much money, so much warehousing spaces. So understanding those constraints and understanding what is the maximum output under those constraints is extremely important to every business person. So here we have a rather trivial example, but the skills you'll learn in this example can be applied to much more complex business models. So the first thing we do, step one, is read and understand the business problem carefully. First of all, we own a coffee shop that sells three beverages, freshly brewed coffee, latte, and mocha. So we understand that those are our three products and those are the three products that are our variables. The amount, the quantities that we're going to produce each cup of uh, regular coffee, cafe latte, and cafe mocha may vary. So we have three variables. And uh, those types of products sell at different prices. The regular coffee sells at $1.25, the mocha sells at $2, and the cafe uh, latte sells at uh, $2, and the cafe mocha sells at $2.25. Now, uh, the next sentence gives us our first indication that we have a constraint, and the constraint is because of storage facilities in our small little uh, coffee shop, we can only produce a total of 500 cups of coffee a week. Additionally, we have some chocolate constraints, maybe because we can only afford to buy so much chocolate, and that constraint leads us to only be able to produce 125 cups of la, uh, cafe mocha or less. We can produce 125, 124, but we simply do not have the capacity, the chocolate, to produce 126. And we help have a milk refrigeration limitation. Uh, we have a little refrigerator in our coffee shop and that can only hold so much milk and that limits us to 350 premium coffee drinks per week. Now we have two premium types of products. We have the latte and mocha, so those added together has to be less than or equal to 350. So again, though that's our business, that's what we sell, that's our pricing structure and our constraints. And now we need to figure out uh, what is our revenue potential and why would we want to know this? Well, uh, suppose we need to go to the bank, to the loan officer and say, I need a loan to uh, fund my new business. And of course the loan officer is going to say, great, we'll give you a loan, but can you pay it back? Uh, what is the revenue potential in your business so we can understand whether or not you can pay the bank back. And in, other t in order to understand that, you need to understand how many cups of coffee or what is the maximum output of production that you can make in a week. So this is a very real problem businesses face every day. So step one, read the business problem, understand it carefully. Step two, identify your variables, give those variables some names. I said X1, 2, and 3. It could have very easily been regular latte and mocha. Again, I'm just simply making a notation up here for myself, understanding that I have three variables. They will be changing value. We're looking for the optimization. Next, I set up a cell space as to where solver will place the optimal number of regular coffees, lattes, and mochas given those constraints. So uh, regular coffee will appear in C6. Uh, the optimal number of lattes will appear in E6. And the optimal number of mochas will appear in G6 given my constraints. The next step is I go and I uh, read the business problem again. And I translate the business problem into a logical statement. So the first statement is one of storage facilities. Uh, I can only produce 500 cups of coffee or less. So that means the uh, number of regular coffees, lattes, and premiums must be equal to or less than 500. I have my chocolate constraint where my mochas have to equal to 125 or less. And finally, uh, my refrigeration constraint where my lattes and mochas can be 350 or less. Now these are logical statements that I translated from the business problem. Excel does not understand these statements, so I need to translate them into an equation that Excel will understand. 
First, I will look to the left-hand side of the equation. I will not enter the logical operator or the constraint on the right-hand side. I'll do that in a bit. But first, I'm going to have my attention on the left-hand side of the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to translate this into a formula that Excel will understand equals uh, x1 is the number of regular copies and I put in my cell reference that is where Excel solver will place the optimal number of regular copies under these constraints plus the number of lattes plus the number of mochas and there we go that's my constraint and I see I have a value show up I can also go up here and it's a good idea to populate these three cells with zero there we go now, also down here, x3 is the number of mochas. So again, I put in equals, and x3 will appear over here in G6. And finally, my uh, refrigeration constraint, which will be the number of lattes plus the number of mochas. And again, making the cell reference. I don't know what these values will be. Excel will tell me here in a few minutes. Now, the next thing I need to do, uh, one of the most important things, I need to put in my maximization formula. What will my maximum uh, revenue be? And that's very easy. Again, I need to translate this uh, equation. So $1.25 times the maximum number of regular coffees. And where is that going to appear? Right here. Plus uh, $2 times the optimal number of lattes. And lattes are going to appear in six plus and then two dollars and twenty five cents times the optimal number of mochas and mochas will appear in G6 so there we have it uh, that's the first part of the setup of our optimization model now we need to make sure the solver tool is installed we go up under the data tab and there it is uh, we have the solver tool installed if it is not installed on your uh, Excel spreadsheet, there may be two problems. One, you may be using a student or home edition. The student or home editions many times do not have this advanced tool. You do need Excel uh, Professional and uh, the solver tool will be available uh, and you need to install it. So we go over File and we go down to Options and under Options we go to Add-ins. We search for Solver. There it is and we click go do not click ok click go click go allows you to select it that's very important we click ok and if we have done our work correctly there it is so now we click on this a dialog box comes up and this is very simple to fill in these uh, these parameters in the solver dialog box the first parameter is the objective cell well what's the objective well the objective is to know how much what's the maximum amount of revenue we can make and where is that cell? And of course that cell was down here in E15. So that's why I put that E15 in there. Uh, what kind of problem is this? Solver also solves minimization problems. We're doing maximization today, so I make sure that's checked. The next thing Solver wants to know, well, where are my variable cells? And we know that. We know that C6 is my regular copy. We know that E6 is my latte. And we know that G6 is my mocha. And of course, you can select that by going over here and using the selection tool. And now the subject to constraints. This is where we focus on the logical operator as well as the right hand side of the equation. And as you can see, E10 has to be less than or equal to 500. E11 has to be less than or equal to 125. And E12 has to be less than or equal to 350. So how do you input these? Well, let me put one in for you. Let me delete this. Uh, so we need to put the first constraint in, so we need to add, and we the cell reference would be right there, E10, and what is our operator? Our operator is less than or equal to, and what is our constraint? It's 500, and if we want to add multiple constraints, we can click add and add the next one, but we have all of them added, so we simply click OK, and there are our three constraints. Uh, make sure that you have make unconstrained variables non-negative. We cannot make uh, negative cups of coffee unless you operate in a black hole, which we don't do. And we assume 
for this introduction. We're using linear programming. Uh, uh, we have some more complex uh, solving methods that we can use, but for today, uh, we use our basic simplex linear programming. So it looks like we've read the business problem. We've set up our uh, model correctly, hopefully. We've identified our objective cell. It's a maximization number. Uh, we have our variable cells identified. We have our constraints, non-negative, and it's time to solve it. And this dialog box comes up and says, do you want to keep the solution? Absolutely. Click OK. And there it is. So uh, given these business constraints, the maximum regular cups of coffee is 150. Uh, the optimal number of lattes is 225. And the optimum of mocha is at 125. All the constraints are met. And our maximum revenue, if everything went absolutely perfectly, we could make $918.75 in revenue per week. So we can give that number and this model to the revenue officer down at the bank. And hopefully we will get our loan. And that's it. Uh, Excel solver and optimization models, extremely important that you understand if you're going to run a business.